Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, your best friend in astronomy, science, and telescopes. I better be. Okay, what are we talking about today? Y yesterday was the first day of summer, so obviously you know uh, what day it is. And I want to talk about this is the time when people go camping, cottaging, backpacking uh, to a you know somewhere out of normally like your big city if that's where you live so what shall you take that's going to be uh, good for uh, that type of situation okay so normally I'm going to say when I go to country skies uh, or away from the city I want scopes that are more wide field and the reason is there's so many huge items out there that I think it's important to capture those wide angles. I think when I'm in the city, I'm observing the sun, moon, and planets, the double stars, maybe uh, some open clusters and things like that in general. And I'm assuming a lot of you guys are doing the same thing as well. But when you get to the country skies, I think uh, having a wide field telescope to capture those big items is the best way because really that's when you're going to see them you don't need to see the planets again in country skies because virtually the, the the planets and the double stars and that type of thing punch through the light pollution so there's no point looking at that stuff when you get, when you get away and if it's once in a blue moon a few times a year to the you want to to the dark skies you want to see the stuff that you can't see from the city or the light pollution which is the darker or the dimmer or the deep sky objects um, so that's my preference uh, that's how I do it uh, so again don't don't bother looking at the planets when you're out of the country observe the stuff that you're not going to observe in the city so let's get to it okay my first a uh, time when I went to a dark sky uh, after I got into the hobby was to a green zone and I brought this guy and because we went in a uh, another friend's car so there was four of us I couldn't carry that much stuff just uh, you know the clothing and food and all that stuff um, even though it was to a cottage I couldn't it wasn't my vehicle I couldn't just bring everything so I brought this guy it was a green zone and with this guy in a green zone and I mean, I used to go camping. I went camping before when I was younger in my teens, but I wasn't into astronomy, so I wasn't really looking up. So I never got into the night sky then. But now, when I got into the hobby, this is what I brought, and in the green zone, you could see the full extent of the Andromeda galaxy. You can see the Veil Nebula, the, the curvy, and it was like, boom, it was right in your face. So something like this would definitely help. I've also taken this guy, which is one of my favorite guys in dark skies, uh, like a gray zone, the second darkest zone. And when you're looking at like, this is a 102 F5, so it produces really wide field of views with a two inch eyepiece and a nebula filter, the uh, Pelican Nebula, the North American Nebula, boom, I caught that. The Helix Nebula, boom, I nailed that one too. So this is, again, just a little bit bigger than that one, uh, but being that it has a two inch focuser, you can put a two inch diagonal, two inch eyepiece, this is the next step up, where you can get a little bit more brighter, see a, a little bit more dimmer stuff, and because of, you can put a two inch eyepiece and a two inch nebula filter, you can really get to see some of that deep, deep sky stuff. Now, there's a couple other refractors that I'm going to mention. The 120 millimeter F5, and then the bigger brother, which is not really popular anymore. It used to be uh, 10 to 20 years ago. Uh, there's only uh, one or two manufacturers that make a 6 inch F5 refractor, but they're really not common anymore. Um, anyway, those could be really good too if you have a good mount for it. Again, capturing because there's no central obstruction, uh, you can go very low with a two inch eyepiece. And again, like those, you can capture huge chunks of sky, Milky Way, that type of thing. That's what uh, is great about these rich field telescopes. That's where you want to use it for that stuff there. Now, I would not say this is portable. So this is a six inch 
F8 refractor. Yes, you could take that if you really want to, and that could also see nice tight uh, double stars clusters. Uh, really remember, a six inch refractor is equal to about an eight inch SCT or an eight inch reflecting telescope. Can it do it? Yes, it can do it. It's only 1200 millimeter focal length, only F8. So if you put something really low, like let's say a two inch 56 millimeter eyepiece, it's about 21, 22 power. So that you can see huge chunks of sky. But normally, I don't, I have brought this to darker skies. Don't get me wrong, I have done it a, a several times but it is kind of big. The bare minimum you're gonna need for this guy is a EQ5, that's the minimum. Now, why I think that could work is because remember, if you want something more sturdy, like on the planets, you wanna see detail, you wanna see the Cassini division, you want to see the, the rings of Saturn, whatever, close up of Mars and it's shadowing, a polar cap, then you want it to be more solid where it's not gonna vibrate. For a, a little uh, galaxy or nebula, uh, I think it's not as important for it to be rock solid. You just wanna see that puffy thing in the eyepiece, which is could be like, 10 million light years to 50 million light years. You just want to see that item. So I have taken this guy out, but again, it is not portable. It is pretty heavy. And the bare minimum you're going to need is in the EQ5. So it's not really so portable. Um, so I would normally say if you're going to bring a six inch refractor, I would say the six inch F5, six inch F6, uh, but the F8, it's up to you if you don't mind that big of a guy and heaviness and the uh, the mount that you need, then that's fine too. Okay, as far as the mini dogs are con concerned, I would say the bare minimum. I would say bring the 130 mi millimeter uh, tabletop Dobsonian or the six inch they have now, F5 Dobsonian, that could be good. Um, now, as far as a traditional uh, Dobsonian, you could take the six, you could take the eight, you know, you are talking about F8, F6, so field of view is, is okay. It is not very portable, especially when you're talking about that base as well, especially like the eight inch or 10 inch. So that's the only problem you're gonna have. They are good telescopes. A lot of people use them for dark uh, skies, but you gotta remember too, that if you're going with other people or with family, you might have to bring, you know, everybody's probably bringing a bag or two. So to carry a Dobson in your car, let's say, and if it's an eight inch or a 10 inch, ooh, it's really iffy if you're gonna have enough uh, space. The six inch does have more space. So I would say six uh, inch uh, Dob tabletop or the five inch might be your best bet. But if you're going alone or with only one other person and you have lots of room, then try your eight and 10 inch. That could work. Even maybe 12 inch Dobsonian can work to collect those deep sky stuff. Now, anything bigger than a 12 inch Dob, I've had two different 16 inch Dobsonians. They are big. Now, unless you have like a grand caravan or something like that, or a pickup truck or something big, uh, maybe. But normally they're very big type of thing. So it's up to you depending on what your uh, situation is, how big of a space you have, if you're going alone or with everybody. So that can work. Okay, as far as a reflecting telescope is concerned, I would say a four and a half inch F5. That's the one that it has 500 millimeter focal length. Now at the one with the Barlow that it's a thousand millimeter and not your traditional long one that's 900 or a thousand millimeter. They're too powerful. When I go to dark skies, I want to have that option of being as wide as possible. If you want to go deeper and closer and closer, you can just put in a stronger eyepiece. So four and a half inch F5 reflecting telescope is a pretty good uh, guy. I'm showing you this guy again. Six inch F5, not F8, not F10. It's too powerful. That might be better on the planets, but I wanna see big deep sky objects. And if I wanna get closer and more powerful, just put a stronger eyepiece in there. But I want the option of being lightweight, portable, and as wide as possible. 
Uh, remember, it cannot go as low as a refractor because of its central obstruction. So even though, uh, let's say some, a refractor could be a bit longer, but without that central obstruction, you can actually go sometimes lower than a reflector with a central obstruction. You do have uh, limits. Okay, what about an eight inch F5? The ones that normally comes with uh, the EQ mounted telescopes, very good. I love that type, type two. Um, again, eight inch gives you really collects a lot of light. F5 is, uh, I believe it's a thousand millimeter, big slice of the sky. You can pump up the power if you want to. Uh, again, it probably needs an EQ5 for that guy uh, or a bit better. But again, looking at the deep sky objects, I'm not pushing the power so much. I just want to see the galaxies or nebulas. So it doesn't have to be rock solid. Uh, anything bigger on a reflecting telescope, it probably won't work uh, beyond that. Uh, there is one option though that I maybe don't mind. I'm not sure about you guys, you tell me. Okay, what about the five, six, eight inch SCT? I have used them in dark skies and sometimes they're good, sometimes not so good. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, I, I, if you guys watched, I brought this guy up to a gray zone or a Bortle zone two several times. I even have some videos on it in 2020 and 21. Go take a look. The problem with the SCT, let's say if we're talking about the eight inch, uh, six and five is the same. They're just a little bit smaller, collects a little bit light, is the focal length and focal ratio is deep. Being this, this one, 2000 millimeter focal length, even putting a two inch diagonal on here with a two inch 56 millimeter eyepiece, which is probably about as low as you can go. Let's say Andromeda. I can only still see about 70% of Andromeda. I can't see the whole thing. It's just too much power. And you don't even bother looking at uh, the Pelican, the, uh, the North America, anything big like that. Even the double cluster, it's a bit close, uh, so you're not seeing the full, uh, th it's actually sometimes nicer to have a big field of view with the, where the star is a little bit tighter than being really close and it looks like it's uh, not almost like a double cluster. It just looks like one cluster and a, uh, the other cluster looks a little sporadic. Uh, but anyway, that's the problem with SCTs. Um, now, if you are not looking at those huge best items like that and you're just going for dim dim stuff uh the eight inch it can collect decent light uh and sometimes to get that power so the small stuff the small dim stuff can work but the big bright stuff won't work so that's the problem with scts even the six inch is at 1500 millimeter focal length and again that's still pretty big okay this can work this is a 10 inch F4 Schmidt Newtonian. Now, the if it be, if it wasn't a Schmidt Newtonian, it would be 10 inch F5 or 4.7, 4 I believe, and that would be even way longer, way heavier. You would need a massive mount. So, uh, Skywatcher does have the Quattro, which is an F4, so that can work. This can work, but normally a 10 inch reflecting telescope uh, is probably at the very limit of uh, taking to a dark sky, I guess, if you have to travel with it. Another scope that I've taken a lot is the 12 inch SCT, uh, uh, the, the LX90 GPS, uh, and that's, uh, if I have an, enough room, I'll take that guy. And 12 inch, again, the tube is pretty small, it's at the limit of portability or what, what I can handle. Uh, so it is pretty big, it's pretty heavy, but 12 inch collects a lot of light. And again, the problem is going to be for that huge wide stuff, it can't do it. It's 3000 millimeter focal length. I have it over there, but I'm not going to take it on here. It's just too big to show you guys, but you know what it is. It's uh, too big for that big stuff, but those small, uh, smaller stuff that's dim and far away, that definitely can work. Uh, anyway, guys, so that's my video for today. So you're going camping, 
cottaging to the trailer, wherever out of the city. Those are what scopes I take, I would take, I could take. Um, question is you guys. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, there's really no wrong in any of that. It just depends on what you wanna see. Uh, again, I started from the smallest ones that can help you out to some of the larger ones type of thing. So you guys decide, um, you know, what you want to take. Uh, it's your, if it's your first time and you have absolutely no space, maybe the smaller refractors, maybe the tabletop Dobsonians, it's something that you're going to have to figure out what do you want to take, uh, but you got to start somewhere. If it's your first time, first year, you take something smaller and you see the brightest of the deep sky stuff then uh, on your second and third trip you bring something a little bit bigger if you can afford it but remember too uh aperture is secondary when you want to see the the dim stuff you need to get away from the city that's the number one thing that's going to help you see the deep sky objects better is getting away from the city so even like a three inch or 80 millimeter f5 refractor and a really good sight is gonna blow away if you have something like an 8 inch 10 inch dobson in a white zone there'll be no comparison that guy will let you see the full structures of the galaxies uh, maybe even some of uh, the nebulas where we are talking about maybe the messier objects so there's no comparison a three inch and a really dark sky would be better than an 8 or 10 inch in a white zone that's for sure um anyway guys i'll see you guys on the next video if you know anybody that's into astronomy send them my link if you guys are on the forums and somebody asks a question that i have the video if you could be so uh, nice and polite and send them that link and say check this video it's what you're asking about um i'd be grateful now again i'll see you next time why not you why not me cheers